The westward air flow near the surface of the ocean causes water to move west, resulting in a slightly higher surface elevation in the westward region compared to the eastern region. The natural inclination of water to equalize surface height due to gravity is counterbalanced by the frictional force of the westward wind. These equal and opposite forces are an unstable but normal condition in the Pacific region. Air turbulence is a normal and common occurrence in the equatorial region. Turbulence can sometimes create an eastward wind burst. On a small scale, this eastward wind interferes with the wind gravity forces that maintain the upward western slope of the water surface, but the wind gravity balance recovers quickly. About every four to seven years, eastward winds collapse the wind gravity balance and the balance cannot recover. This marks the beginning of an El Nino event. This visualization depicts sea surface height in the Pacific Equatorial region. The top panel describes sea surface height. Brown is higher sea surface height and green is lower. Brown dominates in the Western Pacific Ocean. The second panel describes mean sea surface height between 2 degrees north and 2 degrees south. Like the top panel, the x-axis is longitude but the y-axis is sea surface height. Note that in the second panel, the y-axis ranges from negative 20 centimeters to positive 40 centimeters, while the x-axis ranges from 80 degrees west to 140 degrees east, a distance of approximately 19,000 kilometers. This figure clearly shows the upward western slope. Because of the vast difference between the vertical and horizontal scales, we cannot feel the upward western slope, but it is obvious in computer models. The arrows in the second panel describe wind direction at the equator. Red arrows are eastward wind that were produced by random turbulence. The eastward wind destroys the wind gravity balance in the western Pacific. After the wind gravity balance is destroyed, the sea surface height slope is destroyed and eastward waves are released. This eastward movement is called the equatorial Kelvin wave. The third panel describes temperature at the equatorial region. Recall that a thermocline is an area of rapidly changing temperature with depth and is located within the first 200 meters of water. Scientists use the 20 degrees Celsius isotherm as the thermocline. The bold line in the third figure is the thermocline. As you can see, the thermocline is deeper in the west and shallower in the east. As the equatorial Kelvin wave moves eastward across the Pacific Basin, shown in the second panel, the thermocline in the third panel flattens along the equator. Sea surface height and the depth of the 20 degrees Celsius thermocline before and after the Kelvin wave propagates through are different. In this figure, the left panels describe conditions before the Kelvin wave, and the right panel describes conditions after the Kelvin wave. Both sea surface and thermocline slopes become flattened after the Kelvin wave passes by. Computer models show this flattening as well. The flattening of the sea surface height is shown in the second panel, and flattening of the 20 degrees Celsius thermocline is in the third panel. Packets of Kelvin waves make the 20 degrees Celsius thermocline deepen, resulting in warmer upwelled eastern equatorial region. The warmer water breaks down the east-west ocean temperature asymmetry and the atmosphere pressure asymmetry, resulting in weaker winds flowing west along the equator. Up to four or five bursts or packets 
of Kelvin waves travel along the equator over the course of three to four months. Each burst continues to depress the 20 degrees Celsius thermocline in the eastern Pacific and weaken the east-west temperature asymmetry and atmosphere pressure asymmetry. As the Kelvin wave brings warmer water from the western boundary region and the temperature differences between the east and west Pacific regions disappear, the eastward winds die down and the eastward current dissipates. Now the gravity wind balance has been destroyed, making the accumulated water at the western boundary region of the Pacific rush towards the east Pacific region. This volume of water movement is 60 to 100 times larger than the water movement due to the Kelvin waves. This water flow raises the sea surface height in the eastern Pacific region. Computer models show this water flow. In the second panel, sea surface height in the eastern Pacific region increases and sea surface slope becomes flatter.